Welcome to Cast RN, where I teach you about all things nursing. Hey everyone, in this video we are going to go through some herbal remedies and things that you need to be aware of when your patients are choosing to use that form of medication. All right, first off, there's some education here that's really important for you to be giving to your patients and also for you as a nurse to understand. So a lot of people use herbal remedies and it's really important to recognize that their autonomy is very, very important to them. It's really important for you to educate your patient on best practices and then let them make their choice. Don't make it for them and don't force them to do anything that they don't want to do. Just remember the old saying that you can catch more flies with honey than vinegar. So upon intake, make sure that you're asking their patient, your patient about any alternative therapies and herbal remedies that they may be using. Make sure that the patient knows to talk to their provider before starting any herbal remedies or before stopping any pharmaceuticals. Make sure that you use significant caution when using herbal remedies when pregnant. Most of these herbal remedies have not been tested to know for sure if they're safe with pregnancy or not. So significant caution is recommended if done at all. Uh, do not give herbal remedies to children. And then always make sure that they understand to follow the recommended dosage. It is possible to overdose on herbs. And then if a patient needs surgery, they need to make sure to stop their herbal supplements two to three weeks beforehand. We're going to go through some of the therapies that are available. I by no means am going to be able to cover everything in this video. There is a link below that will take you to a website where you can study more in depth if you so choose. So aloe vera is a really common herbal remedy that people might use. You've probably used this yourself uh, with sunburns. So it can be taken topically or orally. It's usually done, used for skin conditions like rashes, burns, or acne. And then when it's taken orally, people use it for weight loss, diabetes, hepatitis, and irritable bowel, irritable bowel syndrome, or IBS. Uh, overuse of aloe can increase the adverse effects of digoxin, which is a heart medication, so make sure you're aware of that. Other than that, it's generally considered safe. Then we've got Asian ginseng. This is usually taken orally. It's used to improve the general well-being. It helps reduce stress, maybe improve memory and physical stamina. This is known to cause insomnia, and it can interact with blood pressure medications and anticoagulants. We've got chamomile. You've probably even drank your own chamomile tea at one point or another. This is used to help with sleeplessness, anxiety, upset stomach, gas, or diarrhea. It also can help with mouth sores that are related to cancer treatment. So this is generally considered safe. And when we say generally considered safe, recognize that that's within normal bounds of taking this medication for adults. We're not including children or pregnant women in this. And we're also not saying to take it in large quantities. Anytime you take anything in large quantities, it's not necessarily safe anymore, okay? All right, then we've got cranberries. This is taken orally. It's generally used to help UTIs and is also considered to be generally safe. We've got one called echinacea. This is usually taken oral. It's used to stimulate the immune system, so anytime someone might be sick with something and is also considered generally safe. Elderberry is also taken orally, and it's helped. it helps with colds or flus or upper respiratory infections. For the most part, it's actually safe. However, in its raw and unripened state, both the berry and parts of its stems and leaves contain toxic substances that can be removed through cooking. But again, you want to be really careful with that because that in high doses can cause significant illness. We've got ephedra. Uh, ephedra was used like 20 some odd years ago in weight loss. Uh, it is taken orally, but it actually has a very, very severe interactions and caused heart attack, stroke, and sudden death in a lot of people that were taking this. They were losing weight, but it caused significant problems. And so it's actually banned now in the U.S., so you should not see it as a nurse anymore in common practice. However, uh, it can still be used in some, some forms of other things, So, and it is used in other countries. So just be aware of that, especially depending on the type of demographic for which you're working. 
garlic, I mean, is topical and oral, and I'm sure all of you have eaten garlic at some point or another. It's used in lots of different food flavorings. It's also thought to lower cholesterol and blood pressure. However, it can interact with anticoagulants. So when taking it as a supplement, you'd be taking more of it than you would just be eating in a meal or something like that. So make sure that you're checking with your patients, especially if they're going in for surgery. We want to make sure that if they're taking anticoagulants and garlic, it could increase their bleeding, which would be dangerous if they're in surgery or just taking anticoagulants. And then we've got ginger, which is also just another type of food that's often eaten in Asian cuisine or Indian cuisine. Uh, so it is oral. It's thought to help with nausea, osteoarthritis, and heart disease. And actually, this one's uh, is one that a lot of people recommend even to pregnant women to help with nausea with morning sickness. It is considered generally safe. So a lot of people when maybe they're feeling slightly nauseated will drink something like ginger ale as well. So you can, uh, that's generally safe for everybody. But again, always make sure that you're talking to your provider before recommending any kind of uh, herbal remedy to a patient. Then we've got ginkgo. This is also oral. It's uses for anxiety, allergies, dementia, and peripheral artery disease. It's may interact with anticoagulants and it is considered unsafe during pregnancy. Specifically, do not let pregnant women take this medication. We've got glucosamine, which is taken orally. This helps with cartilage synthesis. So people who might be having age-related cartilage uh, decline, they can take this or if they have other reasons. Um, I had knee surgery as a teenager and actually had to have some of my cartilage removed from one of my knees and uh, took glucosamine for a long time through high school and into college to kind of help with that knee recovery. I'm not entirely sure if it worked or not, but it is safe. So I never had any problems with it. We've got kava. So kava is actually native to the Eastern Pacific Islands and has been used for thousands of years. It's used to treat anxiety and insomnia. However, it is linked to liver injury. So you definitely want to use caution in kava and whether or not it's used. Lavender is used topically and orally and as aromatherapy. Uh, it's used to flavor foods and makeup and perfumes and all sorts of things. It's helps. It's said to help with anxiety and depression and is generally safe. On a side note, I wrote a paper when I was in nursing school about aromatherapy just as an alternative form of therapy for one of my research-based articles that I needed to write. And actually, it's been proven by multiple research studies that aromatherapy can help reduce pain. Uh, as well as some anxiety and depression. So, and the one that I particularly did didn't have lavender involved. It was some citrus smells, but the concept there is the same. And this can be really helpful for a lot of people uh, inside the hospital setting or inside of a nursing facility in some way or another uh, to have just a little bit of something to help reduce the anxiety and depression that may be associated with the loss of something they're experiencing at that time. Melatonin is oral. It's helps with insomnia. It's used as a sleep enhancer and it's also considered generally safe. I have actually given melatonin to patients before as ordered by the doctor. So uh, it's generally safe as long as the doctor is aware. We've got peppermint oil. This is very similar to the lavender. It's used topically and orally. It's used as a flavoring, but it also helps with IBS, muscle aches, and stress reduction. It's also considered generally safe. And then one that I definitely want you to commit to memory, because inevitably there will probably be a test question on this at some point in your nursing career, is St. John's wort. This is used topically and orally, and it's generally safe for people that are not taking pharmaceuticals, but it does interact with um, many pharmaceuticals and can weaken the effects of those medications, as well as increase the effects of some of those important medications. Um, it's used to treat depression, OCD, wounds, bruises, and muscle pain. But these interactions that it can interact with are antidepressants, birth control, cyclosporine, which is a rejection medication for transplanted organs, some heart medications, including digoxin, some HIV medications, some cancer medications, warfarin, which is an anticoagulant, and some statins, which is a cholesterol medication. So make sure that you are always asking your patients if they're taking any herbal remedies. And one thing that's also important to ask is, you know, one time I had a, a birth control implant in my arm and I had a, 
a doctor asked me if I was taking anything and I knew better. I knew that it was there, obviously, and I knew that it was a type of medication. But the way that the question was phrased was, are you taking anything? And I was like, no, orally, I'm not taking anything because I'm re- I'm a really bad pill taker when it comes to taking pills. I just don't remember. And so that's why I'd chosen to go that route with birth control. And later on in the conversation, it clicked in my head like, oh, by the way, I have this type of birth control, but I'm not taking any medication. So just be aware on how you're asking those questions, uh, especially take into consideration the age of your patients and what might be going on with them. So any woman of childbearing age may be using some form of birth control. So maybe you need to just rephrase that. So uh, make sure that you're, you're asking and getting a thorough history from your patients. Then we've got turmeric, which is topical and oral. It's thought to be anti-inflammatory, so people take it for arthritis and digestive disorders as well as respiratory infections, and there's a few other things. It's also considered generally safe. This is used a lot in cooking as well. I have turmeric in my spice cabinet. And my husband actually, uh, when we first got together, he was taking a lot of pharmaceuticals to help treat some back pain that he has. He has a condition called Sherman's kyphosis, and he has a lot of back pain as associated with that and actually had major surgery as a teenager to straighten his spine and has a rod on either side of his spine and because of that has long lasting back pain and he actually started taking some turmeric since we've been married with black pepper and that actually helped reduce a lot of the inflammation has has helped him in controlling some of his pain Uh, so in our experience, this one has worked great for us. But of course, you know, we were talking with his doctor, letting his doctor know that what he was taking and making sure that that didn't interact with any other medications that he was taking. So um, personal experience here, turmeric's great. We also cook with it every time we cook Indian food or something like that in our home. And then we've got valerian or valerian root. This is also taken orally. It's thought to treat insomnia, anxiety, depression, PMS, and headaches, and is also considered generally safe. So just a quick review, make sure that you're respecting the autonomy of your patients and work with your patient, not against them. Make sure to ask about herbal supplements and alternative therapy and encourage the patient to talk with their provider. Thanks for tuning in. Please help me grow my channel by clicking subscribe and follow below. 